In this lecture, we'll talk about a new topic, advertising on the web, and it's actually related to the online learning we briefly mentioned before. Um, so in the classic model of algorithm, you get to see the entire output, right? And then you uh, compute or learn some function of it. So in this context, we call it offline algorithms. And in contrast, for online algorithms, you'll get to see the input only one piece at a time, and you need to make irrevocable uh, decisions along the way. And this is similar to the data stream uh, model uh, we talked about in the previous lecture. So next, let's start with one particular problem called online bipartite matching. So what is bipartite matching? Then in, for example, let's say that we have four boys on the left and four girls on the right. So in total, we have uh, eight nodes and the edges represent the preferences between the boys and girls. And the goal of the bipartite matching problem is to match the boys to the girls such that maximum number of preferences is satisfied. So basically we would like to have the maximum number of pairs matched. For example, one possible matching can, can be that we match node one to node A when we match uh, node two to node B and we match node three to node D. And since we have three pairs, we say that the cardinality of the matching, uh, which is written as here, is three. And we have a concept called perfect matching, which means that the matching such that uh, all vertices or all nodes of the, of the graph are matched. And interestingly, in this graph, we, have, we do have one perfect matching, which is when we match uh, one, one C, two B, three uh, D and four A. And another related concept is maximum matching which means a matching that contains the largest possible number of matches. So as you can see, for one particular bipartite matching problem, there's always a maximum matching, but it's possible that there is no perfect matching. Then matching algorithm basically means an algorithm that tries to find a maximum matching for a given bipartite graph. And it will try to find the perfect matching if, if such matching exists. And actually there is a polynomial time offline algorithm, which is uh, usually called hopcroft carp algorithm that is based on augmenting paths. And it's, uh, it's usually used to find the maximum matching for a given bipartite graph. And one, one question, we have is what if we do not know the entire graph up front? And this is why this is why we have the online graph matching problem. So initially we're in this problem, we're given the set boys only. And in each round, one girl's choices are reviewed. That is the one girl's edges are reviewed. For example, we're given these four boys in the front and and in the first round, the girl A's and, and her two edges are reviewed. So at that time, we have to decide whether to pair this girl with, with one of the boys or we do not pair the girl with any boys. And once this decision is made, and once the second girls uh, appear, we, we cannot go back and, and, and change our decision for the first girl. And one example, uh, of applications in this like, online graph matching problem is to assign tasks uh, to servers. For example, let's say that we have a lot of servers and we have some resources and there is uh, there are some tasks appearing, appearing uh, uh, constantly. So we will like to decide whether we want to accept the task and assign the task to some servers or not. So this is one of the applications of the online uh, graph matching problem. And concretely, let's look at this example. Uh, at the, 
initially we have this four nodes. So this is uh, this is our four boys on the left. And in the first round, the first girl, A, revealed her choices. So we have two edges. And the algorithm will decide to match uh, match this node A to, to node one. So we have a, a pair already. And in the second round, we have the second girl of uh, revealing her choices. So we have these two preferences. And the algorithm may decide to match uh, this girl B to, to void two. And in the third round, here we have a, uh, a, a girl revealing her choices. And let's say that differently, at this time, the algorithm does not choose to match this uh, match this girl with anyone since this node A, uh, this node one is already taken. And in the fourth round, we have another girl appearing and reveal her choices. And the algorithm decide to uh, match node B to node three. So the result of this algorithm is that it's already matched uh, three pairs of nodes. Obviously one, one simple and, and maybe effective algorithm you can think of is the greedy algorithm for this online block matching problem. And in the greedy algorithm, uh, you will pair the new girl with any eligible boy. And, and, uh, and if there is no boy available to match this girl, then an algorithm will just simply skip this girl and, and, and go to the next round. So one question is how good is the algorithm? And usually to evaluate a algorithm for online graph matching, we'll use a metric called competitive ratio. So what is competitive ratio and how do we compute it? Usually uh, for, for an input graph I, let's suppose some greedy algorithms produces uh, a matching, what we denoted as M greedy, and an optimal matching is M optimal. Then to compute the competitive ratio, we need to compute the ratio between M greedy basically the cardinality of M greedy uh, to the cardinality of M optimum. And we, we need to compute the min minimal version of this over all possible inputs. So basically, the, in our case, the competitive ratio for the greedy algorithm, it means uh, what is the greedy algorithm's worst performance over all possible input graphs, right? And next, let's analyze this greedy algorithm rigorously. Let's consider a case where the greedy, the greedy algorithm does not give us the optimal matching. So M greedy is not equal to M optimal. And we, for example, more concretely, let's say that um, all the black edges represent uh, the optimal matching. So as long as you can see here, we have uh, four pairs. Uh, in the on the in the optimal patching, matching, and we have uh, the red edges representing the solution given by the greedy algorithm. So we have three paths given by the greedy algorithm. And further, let's say that uh, G is the set of girls match in the optimal matching, but not in the greedy matching. So in this case, uh, the set of girls G. Uh, it consists of only one node, which is this node here. You can see that this node, it's, it's, it's matched uh, in the optimal matching, but it's actually not matched in the greedy matching, right? And let's also say that uh, the set B is the set of boys adjacent to the girls in, in the set G, and, and it's also already matched in the greedy algorithm. So in this case, uh, the set of boys B consists of two nodes, and these are the nodes three and nodes four. We can see that these two nodes they are adjacent to to this uh, to this uh, girls to this girl D, and uh, they are also matched to B and C in the greedy algorithm. Therefore, uh, the set B consists of two nodes three and three and four. And note that if 
that would exist, that would exist such non-match boy as adjacent to a non-match girl, then really our weapon would have matched them, right? So basically this is why we have these two nodes in B and it has to be matched already uh, to the uh, to the algorithm, to the greedy algorithm. And since the boys B are already matched in the greedy matching, then we know this for sure, right? We know that the cardinality of the M greedy, it has to be larger or larger than or equal to, or equal to the cardinality of B. So this is the summary so far. We have, we, we, we denote as G, the set of goals that are matched in the optimal matching, but not in the greedy matching. And we have the, our first inequality saying that the cardinality of the, of the M greedy, which is the solution given by the greedy algorithm is larger than or equal to the cardinality of B. So besides this, we also know that there were at least the cardinality of G such boys in the, in the set B, because otherwise the optimal algorithm couldn't have matched all the girls in G, right? It has to be this amount. It has to be this amount of boys on the other side, such that the optimal algorithm can, can match the girls in G. So therefore, we have another inequality saying that the cardinality, uh, the cardinality of G is uh, small, smaller than or equal to the cardinality of B. And combining this one with the, with the first one, we have this whole, whole inequality saying that the cardinality of G is smaller than or equal to the cardinality of B, which is smaller than or equal to the cardinality of M greedy here. And that's by definition of G, we also know that the cardinality of M optimal, it has to be smaller than or equal to the cardinality of M greedy plus the cardinality of G, right? So combining the second inequality and the third inequality, we will have that the cardinality of M optimal is smaller than or equal to twice the cardinality of M greedy, right? Because we, we only need to replace this G here with the M greedy here. Therefore, we have two, greedy, two M greedy here. This is our, our, our inequality here. And we, with some simple manipulation, we, we will know that the ratio between M greedy and M optimal would be larger than or equal to uh, one over two. So basically, uh, we already we already know that the comparative ratio of the greedy algorithm it has to be larger than or equal to uh, one over two. And the worst case, which is one over two, it happens when when the cardinality of G and B and M greedy they are the same. So basically. It, the inequality holds when when the when the when the equality in the second uh, equation holds. Now let's see an example of the worst case scenario. Let's say that we already have these four nodes on the left. Uh, these are the boys, and we have the uh, the first girl revealing her choices, and the algorithm happens to choose to uh, match this girl A to, to boy one. And in the next round, we have the second girl revealing her choices, which is two and three. And in this time, the algorithm will try to, uh, will, will match this girl B to boy two. And in the third round, let's say that we have the third girl uh, re revealing the choices, but unfortunately, this boy one is is already taken. Therefore, the algorithm couldn't do anything; has to skip. And in the fourth round, we have the fourth girl revealing the choices. And similarly, this only choice boy two is already been taken. Therefore, uh, the algorithm cannot match this girl to any boy. And in this case, the cardinality of M greedy is two. 
and obviously we have a optimal solution which have which, which can have four pairs uh, that can be matched. Therefore, in this case, uh, the the ratio between them is one over two, which is basically the worst case.